and welcome. Today we are talking to Jamie Lee from Raventail Publishing with your book, Harmony. Uh, Jamie, tell me a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. I've been writing too long, but publishing too little. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think COVID set me back a lot. And then uh, just trying to figure out how to get everything published when, you know, I'm kind of on my own. Thankfully, I've had some help in uh, that quarter. So here we are. But it's your, your bio says that you've been writing for 30 years and been basically trying to work on having harmonies been running around in your mind for the last 15. Tell me a little bit about that odyssey. It's been interesting. So when I've been asked, you know, there, <laughs> I've been asked, uh, well, how many books are there? I was like, there's a number. I've actually, you know, figured out the entire mythology and side stories. It seems like when I'm working on a character, I've looked up a name and like, oh, well, that's an interesting etymology for that name. And then suddenly I've created side projects for them. So <laughs> I come back. Very good. Well, what gets you started on the overall notion? I mean, you've been working on Harmony here. Where did you originally come up with the concept for this? Actually, it's a alchemical phrase, solvate coagula, which is basically dissolve. You're basically seeking it's lead in a gold is the fundamental idea of it. And that's kind of a concept that goes throughout Harmony. You have this kind of base physical acts. And then they're being refined as time goes on. Harmony's interpretation, the I guess the titular character from the book, her uh, way to get there is a little flawed. And uh, it starts having an effect on the reality around her, So, which uh, creates a rippling effect, as some of the characters call it or refer to it as. Well, when did you first realize that you had a gift for writing? Uh a very long time ago. I spent a lot of time in my head as a child. And uh, I think uh, someone has been told, uh, not a therapist, probably should be. Uh, but, you know, I've, I had some trauma early in life and uh, writing was an escape for me. Uh, I basically created worlds in my head and uh, I thought, oh, well, who knows? People are actually entertained by this or, you know, they like the fact that I have the attention span for fruit fly and just kind of go around everywhere. So... <laughs> Sometimes some of my ideas come through and I've started committing them to paper. Very good. Uh, take me a little through the journey of how you assemble a book. For You've started off here. You got the initial idea for this. You have a lot of general uh, alchemy things or going into all of this. So mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me how you kind of got to the point of getting it actually written down and the whole process for what you go through to do that. Okay. So would you believe Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes? Actually, he's done a lot, gotten a lot of people started. <laughs> so I had read, and I, it's been a while, but I'd read a long time ago that he worked backwards. That's how he actually, he was like, okay, well, here's the solution. And then, you know, basically he would work backwards, so to speak. So that's what I did with the Harmony. I basically had this, I knew what the ending was, always knew what the ending was. And uh, basically, although I had the, you know, the core concept of Solvia Calagula that kind of, you know, everything messed around, I actually had the ending, you know, a long time ago. And then I worked backwards and I, I've heard people will, you know, put things on whiteboards, you know, it's all nice and orderly. Yeah, I don't work like that. <laughs> I have... I have chapters. I'm like, hey, that'd be a cool idea. And then I have to figure out how it all meshes together. And, uh, you know, I've changed some things here and there. There was a chapter I could think of, you know, it just just the entire tone of it and what happened, the kind of bare bones was still there. But, you know, it went through a couple of revisions as I kind of mesh with the entirety of the book. Do you, do you hear the characters talking to you as to what they would do versus not do and rewrite accordingly or you basically running on an outline of where you want to achieve for each chapter. I was about to ask you, what are you, a cop? Are you trying to get in my head? No. <laughs> hmm, maybe. <laughs> uh, somebody had told me once, I was like, you know, I think I can hear the character's voices in my head. They were like, never say that out loud. I was like, I don't know. I thought that was normal. Uh, so, yes, I actually can. Uh, you know, I do hear the character's voices. Uh, and they kind of direct me, so to speak. There are certain things. And some of my proofreaders, I've had a look at it. When I've tried, you know, I've tried to write some things down. They're like, that's not how that character would act. I'm like, I thought I created them. I was like, they're like, well, that's not how they would act. I'm like, well, heck, it's just the one book. Right? Okay, fine. I'll change it. So I think that answers the question. Um, but, you know, I, 
I kind of, I do carry a notebook with me. Um, I believe that although I type up far faster than I can ever write anything down, I do keep a notebook and that physical act of actually trying to decipher my own writing helps me. So I screwed <laughs> down ideas. Yeah. Very good on all that. Um, excuse me. Uh, when, when you're writing on things, do you find yourself catering to what you think a reader wants to read, or do you write more for what just get the story out that you want to tell? I think it's a little give and take there. Uh, for the most part, there is a, I, I believe in staying true to my story and staying true to the world. And now that the characters are kind of breathing, um, I, I, I want to make sure that they have their spotlight. They don't get angry with me or my proofreaders, evidently. And uh, with that said, you know, there are certain things that, you know, I, it's more of, I think internally, I'm like, oh, well, that is hilarious. Now, if I wind up doing a reading and people are staring at me, I'll be like, boy, that did not deliver like I thought it would. But, you know, <laughs> I try to write things that are entertaining. In book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in my head, I mean, you know, I thought it was great. So I was like, are they angry at me? Do I need a retreat? I don't know. So. Oh, which of your characters, true. which of your characters do you think you would get along with the most in real life? Oh, that's difficult. If any. My, <laughs> it, uh, my characters are shades of gray. Uh, I'd read this. I, Rob Zombie had said this too. Uh, when he was making his movies, he was like, I, I of course, his was more like I I have kind of paraphrasing that the evil characters, my characters aren't evil, but they're gray. I mean, they're neither good nor evil. They're just people. They sometimes have some extraordinary uh, abilities. Uh, I'm getting to the question, I promise. So right. the I don't know. I, I could get along with some of them, but I also know their backstory. So I'm like, yeah, they're kind of people, you know, you meet and you're like, man, I need to go to the restroom, which, you know, it's on the way to my car, and I just need to get in and drive for a while. So, you know. <laughs> so may not want to be get too, too close to any of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that can definitely happen. What got you started into the whole realms of horror for as an outlet? Would you believe Warhammer Fantasy role play? Actually, I could. <laughs> yeah. It uh, I mean, I started role playing. You know, uh, Dungeon Dragons before it was cool. I'll say that. Oh yes, I was yeah, there. so popular. <laughs> yeah. So, but whenever I played those games, I uh, you know, I was always like, well, why can't I play the werewolf? Why can't I play the vampire? You know, those are the things I wanted to do. And then when Warhammer came out, oh heck, I was probably maybe 11, 12 years old, and it was like, hey, this is a mature system. It's got stuff from Call of Cthulhu, and I remember just all their artwork was this black grays and white i mean and it was brutal and i was like what am i looking at this is so wonderful <laughs> and that kind of which they referred to as grim dark but also grimy dark that influenced me so much that i've tried to keep that theme i'm like you know and that's kind of where my characters aren't really you know it's they're they're in the grays definitely so i can honestly say warhammer had a lot to do with that well, they've always, so does, you know, the more flaws that a character has, the more interesting they are to write about and makes a more interesting story, too, instead of just, you know, good guy, bad guy, stuff like that. It's like, well, depends on what's happening at the moment. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So the paladin for me out of Dungeon Dragons never agreed with me. I'm like, how can he do that? Oh, like, but they have evil paladins now, apparently. At least my yeah. son says they do. I, I'm just like, OK, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's what I've heard as well, too. I was like, okay, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way we used to do things. <laughs> <laughs> so do, do you, are you, when you're, you're, you have a good RP background going to everything, is that mm -hmm. kind of in the, the mode that you write in, or do you find yourself doing things differently when it comes to the crafting of a story? A little of both. So I've been playing with the same group of people. You know, people are like, well, how can you be friends with them? I was like, because they're great role players. We've been playing for 20 something years. I was like, yeah. you don't use your role playing group. I was like, we may be all across the country. So I test ideas on them. Mm -hmm. I don't know it. Uh, there are certain, I, yeah. And I, I, well, I have admitted it to them now, but there are things, you know, that I come out through and I kind of like take pieces of that and I start putting it into my books. Uh, that said, the process of creating my story, uh, especially Harmony, you know, it's different. Um, 
I would say it's a, yeah, it's a little less spontaneous. Uh, there's a lot more plotting, even though I, you know, go all over the place. So honestly, my litmus test for some ideas has been my RPG group. Thanks, guys. Yes, definitely. Well, RPG groups are always good for, well, if you have a really, really dark and weird kind of a session going with people, that's a great time to test out new story things. Or it is. Just go into some really kind of odd concepts and see what happens with everybody else working off of you. And it's like, oh, yeah, I can go back and write about this. Yeah, I like that. Yep. And since I run the games, you know, it's like, hey, guys, guess what ah. we're doing this week? So. <laughs> see what we're going to do to each of you today. <laughs> great and happy. It's the power of being in charge of the entire thing. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Um, does anyone in your family read your books? I do. I have a very sweet aunt named Linda. She's like, I am. I bought three copies. I'm like, oh, you dear soul. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from her. I, I need to talk to her, uh, see what she thought. Cause I know she ordered the copy and she wants me to sign it and everything. So uh, yeah, I know that she has distributed a couple of copies to family members. I don't know who yet. I'm like, well, I guess if she stops talking to me or unfriends me on social media somewhere, I'll know my answer. But uh, she uh, <laughs> very supportive. That's excellent. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times you get the whole thing of you're working in the horror entire category mm -hmm. and people kind of go, Ooh, I want to read this. Ooh, I want to think. I mean, there's a lot of just fabulous stories that emerge in horror, and there are people don't always necessarily appreciate all of that. Particularly, uh, yeah, I'm not sure my mother would have ever particularly enjoyed me doing that. But. Yeah, and that's the one thing that, uh, to me, I've always thought of horror as a challenge too, because to me, it's like it's not just gore. I'm like, oh god, if I might throw something together, it you craft a story from it. It's like, okay, gore is you know, it's kind of uh, the dressing for it but is there actually a story underneath you know all of the spectacle so that's kind of what i strive for yeah it's an environment and seeing how the characters act within that environment and yeah people get killed and that's kind of what happens and there's a lot of blood but you know it's still a human beings or sort of human beings or something slightly related to or trying to kill human beings is tied into all of that exactly very good uh what would you be the most valuable most valuable piece of advice you would give to someone about writing stay committed to it uh if i can do it with a you know my mayfly attention span then uh <laughs> you you gotta you know it's like to me i i found the best thing to do was you know it was like well i'll get all this stuff done and then you know i'll write at the end of the day and then it's kind of like well i've only got five minutes i'm going to bed then i'm like no i basically i write and then i get what my goal is for the day and then it's like okay i get everything else done that really is having that committed schedule it's it's just writing you know i was like it's great to have the idea in your head but just get it on paper or yeah that's good computer. that's the, one of the hardest things to do along with like you know the frequent writer's block thing is that something you have ever had trouble with i haven't uh so far I'm going to knock on wood here. So, you know, we're just going to dispel that. So uh, being slightly superstitious a little bit. Uh, but no, thankfully not. Well, you've got the first book done, published and out there now. I understand you're working on the second one at the moment. It's actually done. I may oh. have got the third done, too. <laughs> got the third. So we had 15 years. Then we had mm -hmm. six months. And then we had even less. Yep. Outstanding. How do you think, how has the overall journey changed for you in the process? It, uh, I'll be honest, there's a lot of fear, you know, uh, when you're first writing. And that's probably why I went through spurts and stops. It's like, okay, you know, because I'm writing and it's like, oh no, no one's going to love this. Uh, maybe I do. Oh no, I don't love this either. But, you know, it really, <laughs> It's seeing it come together now. And now that I've started to tell the character stories, it's like, well, I got to kind of finish. And I was like, it, you know, I was like, I feel like they'll be angry with me. So <laughs> well, when you wrap all of the particular books of the series up, what what's in the back of your mind that you've always wanted to go into writing that you haven't started on yet? That's a very interesting question. Uh because as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, I actually have kind of formulated 
several other series based on this. So I kind of see I've created this. I, I don't want to use multiverse or anything I could so ever use, but I have created a bunch of side stories and stuff. And I think some of the characters that what I really want to work on is a story for a uh, character called Emma uh, who appears in it. And I really want to dig into that because hers is more of a period piece uh, and kind of in some ways overlaps with the dusty tail uh, label. So it's kind of cool. Hey, we'll definitely uh, take some of that as a crossover. There's no problem there. <laughs> awesome. Um, now that you're speeding up on things, how long does it typically take you to be able to get ready to write the story? Or have you at this point outlined where you're going to go for each section of the series and then you just fill it in at this point? I have my, uh, I mentioned my notebook earlier. So yes. it's got notes scrawled in it now. And I know the how to put it. I know where I know the outline of where the entire Harmony series, we'll say that arc, is going to go. And then I've got for the others in the series, I've got the inkling of okay, well, I know where the idea is going to go, and I'm curious where it'll take me. But in terms of Harmony, I know exactly how it did. Uh, and and when I mentioned the ending for Harmony the end book in this series of her arc, I know exactly how it'll end as well. So I just got to fill so in the You know how the, the book meat. ends and you know how her the entire series. spread of everything goes. Excellent. That's a big wide gap of things to figure out. Although, did you get that primarily from setting up things for gaming or is that, because that's having that much, that large of an idea for a story that frequently is, you know, type of thing. If you're going to plan out a campaign for people, that's same basic functions there. i think yeah i think planning campaigns has given me that versatility because i would basically do the same thing i would say okay well here's what the ending is oh man i've been doing that a while haven't i and uh <laughs> the uh but yeah uh learning that framing of okay well here's where the stories are and then the way i've adapted like with my players is I will have a loose outline. I would have like three sentences written down and then I would see how they would react. And then I would craft everything around them. So I think that has given me a lot of uh, flexibility and versatility in what I do. Absolutely. And the more you write of things, the more interesting angles you have and the more spinoff books you get to keep writing. Exactly. Which we'll be happy to have you do lots of those. <laughs> oh, yay. Keep them coming. <laughs> so I've got a few. Excellent. Um, so where would we find out more about your books? JamieLeeAuthor.com. Okay. Uh, and also where I, we're, I'm available. Harmony is now available on Amazon, on Kindle, and a uh, softback imprint. Or softback? My terminology. If it's paperback, yes. As opposed paperback. to hardback. Yeah. You know, that's that's Make the word, book. too. That probably is better. Uh, <laughs> But Kindle and paperback. <laughs> I was like, maybe. I was like, yep. Yeah, so you've got all the basic, uh, the basic formats for it being printed, so that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I can't get the words straight, I promise my writing's far better. No worries, no worries at all. <laughs> what are some misconceptions about the horror genre that you would like to clear up for people? Uh, Can you have misconceptions about a horror genre? <laughs> I think you can. That's all blood and gore. Unfortunately, Har Harmony has some gore. A friend of mine, dear friend, had read the book. And she was like, Jamie, it's gory. I was like, really? I didn't think it was. I toned it down. Hmm. Um, <laughs> that That's all there is. Uh, you know, that, that they see movies and like a lot of movies now or, you know, just torture essentially. And, you know, I was like with the thinly wrapped plot around it. I was like, that's not the case. There's a lot of depth, uh, to be honest, uh, like an early influence. Well, not early, but an influence for me is Gothic literature, classics, you know, for a while there, it's been a little bit, but I used to read Dracula every year by Bram Stoker nice. and that's heavily influenced me. Yeah. Uh, you know, so for me, there is that depth of storytelling you can do. Uh, so, you know, it's not just doom and gloom, but, you know, there is that depth and uh, character development there. 
particularly when you get into Dracula, a lot of people that he becomes a majorly loved character that goes on. It's not just the vampire that goes around sucking on people. Nope. I mean, he has spawned generations of stories yes. like that. So, <laughs> any l- words of great wisdom you would give to a new author? New author, keep at it. The uh, I know I'm re- repeating myself here, but, but don't be discouraged. Uh, you know, and make sure and write. Honestly, I'd heard this before and been told, you know, it's right. Uh, and that's the main thing because your stories are great in your head, but no one's going to know that if you don't actually put it to paper or get your keyboard out. Very true. Well, thank you for joining us today. Definitely appreciate you taking the time. Kevin, I appreciate it. All right. I'm thank glad you. to be here.